Francis Thorndike, you, you are in the uh, Department of Psychiatry in the School of Medicine, and, and I, I'm, I'm looking through some of the stuff you do, and I just want you to explain, what is it you do? <laughs> So as you mentioned, I'm a faculty member in psychiatry, um, but my area of expertise and real interest is in using the different technologies that we have now, whether it's the internet or mobile phones or all kinds of things that are coming out to really improve access to care for our patients and also to improve outcomes. Um, Within the Department of Psychiatry, there's a a group called the Behavioral Health and Technology Lab, um, and that's directed by my colleague, Dr. Lee Ritterman, and we we in that group really try to figure out what are the best ways that we can get care out to people. We can't just depend on face-to-face, you know, everyone coming into our office. So what are the ways to make these kinds of treatments that have been shown to be effective available? Mm-hmm. And, and I, I, I'm looking at, at the, some of the info about your research and, and, uh, and your work, and, and it, um, you, 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 do, you work on technologies that, that treat insomnia, that treat diabetes, that treat all kinds of things that I normally wouldn't think of in the same uh, folder of the same box. Uh, how, how does that come to be? What, uh, yes, that, that definitely makes us a, a bit different than most people that are in this space. I actually started off originally with an interest in uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. And so the very first time I built one of these interventions um, was with a group of colleagues up in D.C., right on the heels of the 9-11 attack on the Pentagon. And at that time, as PTSD researchers, we were all wondering, how are we gonna meet the needs of our patients if we have these events of mass violence? And so we developed one of these online interventions. Um, The principal investigator at that time was, was Brett Litz with some NIH funding. But that is what really led me to fall in love with this idea of, we really need to figure out how we can get care out there to people, and it can't just be in our offices. Mm-hmm. What What are these? Uh, <clears throat> what's a really compelling example of, of using technology? I'm I'm trying to imagine like an online intervention. What does that look like? So, as I was saying, we did one for PTSD, but I think one that people can really get their minds around is a program that we developed for insomnia. And it's really modeled very closely off of what we do face-to-face in cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia. So that's usually about a six-week treatment. Well, we deliver that intervention over six weeks, and each week we're giving those users new information. But I think one of the things that sets our work apart is that we have our, our users putting in information each day, symptoms, you know, detailed information, and then have developed algorithms that's going to give tailored recommendations to each individual user. So it's really mapping on, you know, fairly closely to what we try to do in the clinic. And obviously it doesn't have the live component, but what we're seeing is that for a large number of people, these interventions can really achieve comparable results to to -to face-to-face care. And I'm certainly not arguing that that we do away with face-to-care, absolutely not. But we, we have more of a need than we can handle with what we have. And so this is just one way to, to try to better meet that need. Do you have a, a, like a facilitator that helps with the, the online interventions as well? Or is it mostly a, like a patient self-directed? So the ones that we build are entirely automated. And so we have a lot of things that go out, for example, emails, where if a user isn't completing certain things or is has a certain level of performance or is having some difficulties, automated emails go out to try to pull that person in. However, um, we have uh, teamed up recently with a, with a commercial partner, and as they're trying to get these interventions out into the market and more into the hands of patients, we're seeing these interventions used in a lot of different ways. So in some cases, there is somebody behind um, the intervention to support it, maybe a clinician or, or that kind of thing. So it, it, it's being used in different ways, but typically when we test it in the lab, we're testimating it in an entirely automated fashion. Sure, sure. So then how does this get uh, sort of scaled up? How do you get it out into the public? Great, great question, and and one that we have always um, wondered about and and wanted to be able to do, and I think that is really where our commercial partnership has come in, because what would happen is after we published a paper, we'd get some press about it, people would start to call, they would want access to it, but we didn't have a way to make it accessible outside of a trial. Right. But um, so we've recently partnered with um, Joe Jennings, who's our CEO, and Be Health Solutions, and now we can license those technologies into the the commercial entity, and then they can figure out the best ways to really go to market to make it available, you know, through 
sleep centers, for example, or, you know, direct to patients or as part of adjunct care. There are a lot of different models. You know, health insurers have been into it, have been very interested in it wellness plans and so they're, they're just different um, models that we're that we're trying to figure out but now we have that way to really try to increase that dissemination very good francis thorndike thank you so much for coming by wtju and the open grounds open house here at uh, uh, open grounds on the corner <laughs> thanks very much for having me